to everyone who is just coming in and if it's your first time joining i appreciate you joining in i am dr beauty and this is testimony tuesdays so testimony tuesdays is basically a platform that i created this year live stream to highlight the great things that people are doing as well as the personal trials and testimonies that they've gone through it's really been a hit and this is only episode six but so many people have actually been hitting me up and asking me if they could be on the show to the point that we are booked even getting into january of 2021 so i thank you guys for all your support and tonight i have a very special guest who's someone i go back to college with and she is doing amazing things so without further ado i'm going to introduce her and i'll bring her into the room so this is Julianne Stevens and she goes by at truly Julie underscore and at Julie thinks at Julie dot thinks. So Julianne's experience has always been aligned to health research, more specifically chronic and sexually transmitted diseases. She started off with aspirations to go to medical school, but after a short year, she discovered that that career path was not her calling. She went on to pursue a graduate degree in health science with a public health concentration, cum laude honors. This achievement catapulted her interest in epidemiology. She initially believed that she would earn her degree in epidemiology, but according to Julianne, God had other plans. One month after accepting an offer to study epidemiology at George Washington University, Julianne accepted a position in Texas working as a lead epidemiologist. Two months later, she was selected for a supervisory role in COVID-19 epidemiology. Julianne prides herself in having blossomed into a well-rounded career-driven professional with rigorous work ethic and a determination to help others through her professional brand, Jolie Thinks, which will be launching soon. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in Julianne and everyone just put in your applause emojis in the chat box as I bring her in. Hey. Good evening, hey. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's so good to see you. <laughs> I know, it's been forever. <laughs> I know, I know. Guys, so we literally, almost grew up together like we've known each other for over 10 years now right right <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness I'm so old <laughs> you know we're still young though we got those baby faces going on <laughs> thank god yes i think we met in chemistry class like yeah. oh, was it right before or bio yeah. one of those mm -hmm. yeah so we've been hitting the books for a minute <laughs> Correct. Yes, but how are you feeling today? Um, I'm good. So today started off very weird. I locked myself out the house with my car keys, my office oh, keys, man. all that. Um, but then you know it worked itself out. So just good energy. <laughs> good, good. Well, I'm glad that everything worked out. And I know it's it's one of those Tuesdays that kind of feels like a Monday for a lot of people. So sometimes that happens. <laughs> Yes. yes yeah but um so welcome to the show as you might have seen i usually start off with a little icebreaker so okay. not that we need one but it's just like a fun question <laughs> so okay. if you could be a member of any girl group from the 90s what group would it be and why um i don't know probably destiny's child i feel like that's the only thing that comes to mind yeah um, That's a good one. I mean, they had good hits in the '90s, like Bales, all that. Like, oh yeah. And I love Kelly, so I would definitely be Kelly. But yeah, <laughs> Kelly, Kelly was awesome, and I feel like her voice was so underrated back then. But she did her thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I was thinking maybe I like some of the older groups, like In Vogue, because mm -hmm. they just had some crazy runs. But Destiny's Child will always be, like, the ultimate girl group. Yeah, definitely. They set yeah. the bar. 
They really did. Yeah. So let's get into our discussion. So just tell us a little bit about Jolie Things and what you are aiming to do with this new platform. Okay, so Jolie Things came about because I've always been told that I'm an overachiever. Like, I'm not an overachiever. I overthink. Um, so I, one day I was like, okay, I want to come up with a really catchy name, you know, that you know, speaks to me and what I'm trying to establish. Um, so I just asked a couple of friends and they were like, oh, I came up with like three names and, you know, that name really stood out. Um, and it came because I have always wanted to talk about mental health. I feel like that is something that, um, especially now in this current climate, that we really need to pay attention to. And just because I've had my problems with mental health, where I've had to make sure that, you know, not just my physical health, but also my mental health, because, you know, transitioning from going to medical school to grad school, just to the, you know, career, professional career path has been a struggle and a challenge. Um, and I've had to take necessary steps. Like now I'm like really into exercising um, and just yoga and meditation as well as seeing a therapist. So I wanted to give back the tools that I learned. I know that not everyone has the opportunity to see a therapist or feels comfortable talking to a therapist. So I wanted to impart the knowledge that I've gained through you know my own personal experience and then as I started to um, navigate my professional career I remember like wanting to get my resume done and stuff like that and I felt like I would be paying like a lot of money to get people to do my resume and stuff and right. so you know during the pandemic at the start I took a, a class on Corey's Hero and got certified and you know, now I'm like really good at making resumes and cover letters and thank you letters, as well as, you know, being a part of the interview process, like how you sell yourself and present yourself during an interview. So I wanted to help others that probably didn't have the confidence or just didn't believe in themselves. And they wanted to get in into that professional realm and they don't have the resources. So I offer affordable, like very affordable you know, resume templates and um, coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, interview prep, all that. Um, as well as I want to take Jolie Things to the next level when I launch and just talk about, like, mental health stuff, like narcissism and narcissistic mm -hmm. abuse, empath being an empath, gaslighting, all that type of stuff. So that's how that came about. Wow. And I think that's so vital right now, especially during the pandemic, because a lot of people lost their jobs or are looking to switch careers and mm -hmm. they might have even been in one career for so many years that they haven't even had to really retouch their resume mm -hmm. so it's a great skill to have to know hey this is the template to go with this is how to sell myself so um in terms of the pandemic and this launch that you're creating mm -hmm. what do you think is a way that you can market to people because some people might not even know that they're doing the wrong thing with their resume um, so this weekend, so Thursday is my birthday. So instead of doing a shoot, just, you know, gear that, just taking a picture of myself, I wanted to do some professional branding for Jolie Things. And mm -hmm. with that, I'm going to use that to actually like, run a, a advertisement and just talking about, you know, kind of, it's like a, I'm using it as like a testimonial thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm going to tap into social media as a, a resource. And of course, word of mouth. Um, I, I uh, thank you. <laughs> Somebody said happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday uh, yeah. I was thinking about starting small and then moving, you know, building my audience as I go along. Also, I'm in a new job. So I'm also trying not to get spread myself too thin because I'm also in school finishing up my cybersecurity um, oh. work. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, you know, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> yes. Reminds me of someone, you know, we, we all, we try to do it all, right? We try yeah. to do it all. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, that's, I think that's an excellent way to go about it because um, it's something that 
especially when you tie in the mental health aspect, it's going to be very appealing. I think a lot of people now, especially in this community, are seeking those resources because they're not really knowing where to turn. It's a lot that you have to go through with this pandemic. And um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into therapy and how you found out about those resources? So, okay. Therapy. <laughs> I started doing therapy when I was at Penn State. I remember I had stopped Penn State. Um, and prior to me stopping, like, with the join that semester, um, I you know, was in going through something very rough and I started going to therapy then. Then I was in the military and that made me also want to see therapy for some reason. But then it was never a continuous process. I would start and then I would stop. Um, but then like after I left medical school, so I did medical school for a year and then I was like, this is not for me. Um, medical school... I felt like I was living somebody else's dream. Like, I don't know if anyone can relate, but if you grew up in a Caribbean household there and you have a, a inclination to science, it's almost natural. Oh, you're, she's going to be a doctor, you know? Right. And I loved science, but I did not want to be, a, and I, I found out how in med school, like I could not concentrate. I was not studying. I was not motivated um you know so after that i started seeing a therapist because you know at this point my entire identity was built on being a doctor and if you at that point i'm not going to be a doctor then who am i like who really is jolian so it's like for me that sent me down a downward spiral um and then i ended up meeting this therapist and um you know I wasn't very consistent at first and I'll tell anybody this therapy is not a bed of rules it's not like you're gonna go there and you're just gonna figure your life out and everything is just gonna go perfectly there are times when she was telling me stuff that I did not want to hear mm -hmm. and I had to at first sometimes I'd be like I'm not going back like that that don't make any sense but then you had to like face the hard truth and um it was a growing process so we built a form of bond where now even now like i'll text her randomly um for any little thing and so i started seeing her like started seeing her regularly it's going on five years now that i've been consistent That's great. um i've not missed a single week even during the pandemic um, we started doing virtual visits. Um, and I think I even, like, it became so much, like, a part of my routine because at that point, um, I was making that transition from medical school to now being in grad school. And then after grad school, it was like, what's next? Like, what am I going to do with myself? And then I started with a lot of, you know, depression and feeling like I wasn't good enough or... I'm not smart enough that imp imposter syndrome where you feel like, okay, you know, you're all of a sudden your accomplishments don't seem real or they don't seem like you did that. So I think it helped um, fuel, you know, boost my self-esteem and it helped that somebody else was believing in me, even though sometimes I was like, she don't even know what she's saying. I'm paying her to say this. <laughs> so, <laughs> So like, you know, but it helps to have that support system. It's something that I highly recommend. Um, it's, it has been a life changing experience. I encourage anyone that if you have that opportunity to make use of it. Hmm. And I really commend you because therapy is somewhat of a taboo topic in a lot of communities because it's like, especially when someone's a perfectionist, it's mm -hmm. admitting something's quote unquote wrong with you, but mm -hmm. it's actually very helpful, I think, to have someone else on the outside looking in kind of put things in perspective for you because we get wrapped up a lot in our thoughts and those negative self-talk situations as well. So it's really great that you use that resource and it was able to reignite that self-esteem 
And just like what we were talking about with the Caribbean parents, same with the African parents, is like doctor, lawyer, engineer. Mm-hmm. And even within medicine, like I talk to my parents sometimes, they're like, oh, but what specialty? And it's like, <laughs> bro, like <laughs> enough that I'm in medicine now, you gotta be like, well, but this specialty I heard is like this. It's like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. And we yeah. that's another conversation that we can probably get into too. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> because like in terms of that, what role do you think that your family had on your mental health during that time, especially transitioning from medical school into graduate school? Honestly, (laughs) being 100% transparent, I did not receive a lot of support. Mm. Um, And I think that also made me very mm, depressed and anxious because it was as, you know, I'm doing this on my own and they, like, it's like, okay, you're going to do public health. Like, what is that? Like, what are you going to do with that? What can you get with that degree? And I think that's something that a lot of, um, you know, um, foreign parents, that's the first thing that comes to their mind. And then they start talking about the sacrifices that they have made. Yes. So <laughs> I, um, you know, I went down that road. Um, and I think that's where also therapy came into place because, you know, I had to learn that I had to live my life for me, you know, regardless of what my parents are thinking or what my friends feel or, you know, I have to believe in myself and it has to come from that place of um, confidence and assurance that this is what is meant for me and live in my truth. And I think um, during that process too, because it was just uh, such a stressful, because to be honest, I myself did not know what I was, what I, what I was going to do. Like, I just did it. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and then see what happens. Or I think at one point I was like, I'm going to do it and then go to dental school or something. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a tough process, but it was worth it. Like, I think it's paying off right now. Like, I'm, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean, because now we can get into what you've been doing with epidemiology and all of that, because That is such a crucial field, especially now with COVID and everything. So you went to um, public health track Mm -hmm. and then you started developing that interest in epidemiology. So can you tell us a little bit about how you made that transition and what got you interested in that field? So when I was doing my um, health science um, degree, Um, I focused on public health research and I was like, okay, maybe I could just go into research. But then I took epidemiology and I really liked it. I hated biostatistics. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And at first they were like, oh, if you want to be an epidemiologist, it's a lot of biostats. And it is. But um, I was like, no, I'm not going to do this to myself. But um, I loved learning about diseases and, you know, the determinants of a disease and, you know, how much disease is the incidence, the prevalence level. And, you know, epidemiology deals with evidence-based research. So a, a lot of what we do in being an epidemiologist shapes the policies in healthcare. Right. So when I was doing that, I really liked that aspect of it. But I think it's one of the hardest discipline in public health to crack. It's the hardest mm-hmm. part to get into. So in my, traditionally, from a, a academia perspective, I was an, a health scientist. So I was like, okay, I might have to go back and do another mar- master's program. And to be more specific, I wanted to po- focus on maternal and child health epidemiology. Mm-hmm. So... um I was like, I'm going to apply. So I applied to John, I mean, George Washington, and I got in to do their MPH and their PhD program. So it was, the PhD program was, you know, dependent on me completing my master's, so then I would just go straight in. Um, and then, you know, the first, my, my semester started during the pandemic. So the first semester, um, I was taking the class, and... I, one of my professors took a keen interest in me. He was like, you have so much experience in um, this and you come from such a diverse background. Um, 
you know, you could do this for your, you know, your project and all that. And so I, I was like thinking about it. And he was like, you don't even need a second master's. You could just go into it. And I was, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to, how would I just get into, you know what I mean? And I, I didn't have any, knowledge, you know, experience or anything like that. Um, so it turns out one day I was just minding my business and a recruiter reached out to me and was like, oh, you have, do you, are you looking for a job? And I had just finished my fellowship. So I was like, yes. And she goes, well, I have a job for you. And she turned, she's now like my really good friend. Wow. Um, and then I was like, what? And I, I filled out some forms and I was thinking to myself, this just sounds absolutely ridiculous because this must be a scam because this sounds <laughs> to be true. Too good to be true. <laughs> so I think on Tuesday, I was getting my hair done and she just called me and was just like, um, are you pack yet? Because she had said that the job was in Texas. So I'm like, pack? Like, why would I be packed, you know? And she's like, uh, because you have to report the Thursday. So I was like, that's not possible because I have to ship my car. She was like, why would you ship your car? You know, we're going to have, and this is just a testament to how God works. We're going to have, um, we're going to pay for your car. I'm like, pay for my car. And just, you know what? I'm not even going to entertain this. And then she called back and she was like, I looked up your ticket. I, I got a ticket. And um, wow. where, where do you want to stay? You know? So I'm like, okay, this don't make any sense. But before that, I had an interview with the state here where I live for an epidemiologist position. So it's like, if I get this position, I'm not trying to go to, like, who wants to go to Texas? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so um, the, the Wednesday, the following day, the recruiter called me, and he didn't really give me a chance. He was just like, you don't have enough experience. So here I am now packing to go to Texas. So I'm, like, calling my friends, and I'm, like, so, you know, I'm crying. I'm like, I don't want to go to Texas, you know, imposter syndrome. I started texting my therapist. This is not going to work out. Like, I don't want to. She was like, you're going to be fine. And like, nobody really took me seriously. They were like, if you don't know something, Google. Like, they made it seem like I was just overreacting. But, you know, my friends, they were really supportive. They stayed up the entire flight. The next morning, I started the job. Um, and they made me a lead. So I was wow. over all the facilities. I, at this point, I don't have any experience. So this particular place did not have an epidemiology department. So I was the one that was coming in and giving protocols without, you know, them without them having anything in place. So I started making that shift, but this is a contract job and I wanted something permanent. So mind you, this job is too good to be true. Like I got flued out. <laughs> Um, I am, my housing is paid for, my car is paid for, my food is paid for, and I'm not even touching my base salary. Wow. So I'm just like, okay, you know, God is so good, but I wanted something permanent. So I was minding my business and again, and then, um, uh, a health, a federal agency reached out to me and they wanted me to come for the role that I was I applied to that was passed up for so I'm like okay wow. I, you know at first I was like God if this, this is your will you know do your thing so at first when I interviewed I didn't hear back and then they were like oh we we found somebody else but then like a week later the recruiter reached back out and he was like oh we um where we want you for this role, how soon can you be here? So I ended up coming back to get the position that I initially wanted, um, working with a federal company. Um, and it just, to me, that just speaks to the power of God because that was, that's within three months of me, you know, starting my job, my profession as an epidemiologist. So I went from a lead to now I'm a deputy supervisor for COVID-19 response. Um, I think like what, what is for you will always be for you. It doesn't matter, you know, who said what and what, 
that other person is doing. I remember when I was, you know, seeking to go on this role, I reached out to somebody that worked at, at you know, the CDC and they were like, oh, you, you're not ready for this yet. You have to do all this stuff first. And I remember I also asked somebody else that was already working in the role and they were like, you need, if you don't know this, I wouldn't even bother trying at this point. Oh I started that job with no knowledge. Um, I've completed in August, I started October, my professional certification in epidemiologist, um, public health tools um, with John Hopkins. So I started not knowing anything, got a, a, a professional cert, and it's now like there's not been a single week that I've passed that a job has not reached out to me for, you know, to start working with them or to do something. And I, it's just God and, you know, how he works. And I say this to say that if you are going after a dream or a goal or something is laid on your heart, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Like, what is for you will never, ever miss you. Exactly. It doesn't matter who thinks what it doesn't matter if you don't have experience you can't have experience unless you start exactly sometimes when you look to other people for guidance for, like i i've never had a mentor never ever it's something that i always feel like i want but somehow it just the relationship it just never feel like it was a hit like it connected or anything so i always said you know, God, if it's your will, you'll find somebody that will mentor me and put me in that position where you want me to go. And sometimes, you, you know, you want something and it doesn't necessarily come when you want it or how you want it. But right. when God is ready to make it happen, it's going to be far greater, better than anything you could ever imagine. Because I would never think that I would start off not having that experience to you know being a lead you know leading people to now being a supervisor a deputy supervisor overseeing other epidemiologists so it's just crazy how god works and it doesn't matter what other people think i can't stress that enough because if i yeah. had listened to all those naysayers i probably would have been sitting here depressed thinking oh i'm not good enough and all you have to do is try just start and just move forward and just ask God to direct your steps in every single way. Don't leave him out at all. Even when you get in there, you yeah, go. Of there. course. <laughs> That's the time that you need him most. That's really the time That's, that you need him most because you different have levels. Yeah. <laughs> different yeah. levels, different devils, they say. It's mm -hmm. like you keep, and the, the one thing I love is that you were qualified from this, the start for this position no matter what other people saw, because not because of the tangible things that you had, but because of what God put in you. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, that position was meant for you and that's why you got it. Not because of what any of those people said, but the crazy thing about it is that when we're called to our destiny and we listen to people telling us that we can't do it, mm -hmm. we kind of allow that to happen we allow that process to take longer until we tell ourselves i got this god mm -hmm. told me this is on my heart this is what i'm meant to do and it's just so great and now you're getting all these calls and i wonder what that person that initially told you no is thinking now they're probably thinking dang <laughs> i was so salty <laughs> i know it's it's just so crazy like i Sometimes I think it's so funny too because I would never ever think, you know, when you're, you know, you, sometimes we look at other people's lives and we are thinking they're so far ahead or they're doing this. Or, Why is this not happening to me? And you, you feel stuck or you feel depressed because, you know, the, the life that you would imagine for yourself is not what is before you are what is not happening for for you but life is not happening for you it's happening you know it's not happening to you it's happening for you so you know out of those trials and tribulation always comes a testimony you know it's if you ever was to think about a time where things are going bad it always work out things always work out in the end no matter what and as, as i say that i'm encouraging myself because yes you know like like i said new heights new devils like it always work so and it's 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 always important to water your own grass the grass is greener where you water it 
not yes. somebody else's lawn. Thank you. So sometimes we sit here and we compare ourselves, but we're we're all different. We're all unique. We have special talents and gifts, and not because it take it took you ninety nine or one thousand and ninety nine steps. That means that it's gonna take another person. 2000 steps you know like yeah. if god calls you through it he'll bring you through it so exactly. it doesn't matter like i said it doesn't matter what anybody else think believe in yourself first and foremost and trust god and everything will you know align perfectly for you yes i'm a total believer in that because so many times we look at what other people are doing especially people who are at the stage that we want to be and we mm -hmm. feel like since things are not going in that straight path like it did for them, which, mm -hmm. by the way, we don't even know if it went in that straight path. That's what they're showing you. Right. That's what they're posting online. They're right. not showing you the hell that they're going through behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to really just value your path because God will never give you something that you can't handle. If you were to take on the burdens of your neighbor, we might not make it. Or if someone tried to carry our burdens they may not make it because we have that unique strength to go through what we're going through so i mm -hmm. like that quote that you said about watering your own grass and that's why i'm such a huge believer in those daily positive affirmations because you have to big yourself up and it's crazy how especially like we've all gone through it like periods of low self-esteem or doubting ourselves and then we get into this phase where like you know what every day i'm gonna tell myself i can do this i'm that boss you know and someone's gonna come along and say oh you're feeling yourself too much do you know what it took to get me to this point of feeling myself <laughs> you you know at a point to that like jamaicans have this thing where they're always saying oh a self-praise is no recommendation and you know i was telling i was saying when i was talking to myself because i often do okay i'm an only sure. child so. <laughs> i have so, to do um, it <laughs> so i was um saying to myself whoever said self praise is no recommendation had low self-esteem because you have to believe in yourself like yes. we get to a point where people now confuse you know having a self-esteem with bragging um you have to you know sometimes you don't know what another person is go i i do that too like sometimes i'll share stuff and i'll delete it immediately because i'm like i don't want anybody to feel like i'm but I remember a point when I did not believe in who I, who I am right now. Like, I didn't believe that I was capable or I was deserving of anything good. So you have to get to that point where you believe in yourself. And if it offends somebody else, that's their personal feelings. You know, you, you're not responsible for that. We all have to encourage each other and believe in ourselves and put out positive energy. There's a difference between humility and being humble. And um, I think... As we, especially as black, you know, people, like, as soon as you start talking or you're at anything nice or good is happening for you, people are like, oh, she's, she's doing too much. Like, yeah. no, like, let people live their truth. Um, like, when you start being positive, you're gonna, you're gonna attract all that is, you know, for you and that is good and worthy and noble. So I think um, it's very important. Like, I want to get to a point where if I was to ever have a family, my daughter, my son, they believe in themselves regardless of what anybody else thinks or feels because it's yes. nobody knows. Everybody have a story. Nobody knows the, the demons you're battling with behind the scenes but you. You know what I mean? So sometimes people have to just see people in, on social, especially social media. It is a ground for comparison and comparison is really the theft of joy so focus on you always for i always tell myself it's just me in my own lane living my yes. own truth you know i'm not in a competition with anybody i'm trying to be better than i was yesterday that's it thank you thank you that's man gem someone said in the comment gems i'm so <laughs> grateful that this is being recorded because you guys want to play this again because you're going to have a lot of gems but <laughs> honestly, like, I want to be that type of parent, like DJ Khaled, who yeah. from day one, even like from in the womb, mm -hmm. I'm like, you're a legend, you're the greatest, you're a mogul. Because that talk mm -hmm. is so important, especially when you have so many naysayers. Mm -hmm. And I'm such a big advocate of, yes, I'm in my lane. That means I can be happy for other people when they succeed. 
which mm -hmm. oftentimes is not reciprocated to us, but you can't even worry about that. You also can't dull your shine to make people comfortable because right. it's almost like a slap in the face of God, I think, when he gives you these <laughs> gifts and you're manifesting and nurturing them and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, well, I don't want this person to feel this way because I'm like, no, this is what you were meant to do. Right. And people need to see this because you're encouraging people out there. So cool. it's, yeah, it's so important to actually like showcase that. And I think whatever supporters you're going to have is cool. It doesn't even matter if anybody supports you because you're living in your purpose. So that's the way I look at it. I agree. Definitely. I think it's just one of those things that as we move forward, we have to learn how to um, not care so much what other people think. And it's hard. I'm, it's something that I'm still working on, like living my truth. And especially when you've been down for so long, like, like before all of this, I was sick for like two years. Like, so it's like now that God is like, blessing me or i'm walking in his favor and his grace like i am i'm happy because there was a point where i didn't think i would be alive to see his hand in my life like there was a point where i didn't think i was deserving or these type of opportunities would ever you know reach me like little old me me like really <laughs> so it's like um i think it's very important for us to clap for other people but not only when things are going good for you like one thing i always that when things weren't going good for me I was always clapping for other people I always believed in other people because you know even I always tell people if you see that success next to you that means you're next in line like you're exactly it's about to be you next time so yeah. be happy for other people like you know celebrate other people and when you celebrate other people then your time will come people will celebrate with you and for you so yes. Don't compare yourself. Never compare yourself. It's really the theft of joy, honestly. It is. And for everyone watching, I'll let you know that even if it's like the tiniest little thing that I'm like, okay, this went well, Julianne's like, you are amazing, sis. You're a superwoman. You're a queen. And we, I reciprocate that too because it's crazy. She's probably one of the people I've known the longest that is that supportive. There are people who I met this pandemic that have been more supportive than a lot of people I've met like a long time ago. Facts. It's, it's crazy. But I think when we pour into each other, especially in our community, it really helps us grow. And the one thing that can bring us down is like, oh, I don't want that person to get past me. I don't want that person to have more success than me. It's like, you have to be supportive of everyone because when I eat, my whole team eats. And mm -hmm. vice versa. So I don't want the next person to be failing because I want to all have us up succeeding and having an empire. So right. I think it takes a lot of confidence too to be able to be around other successful people and know that one, it's not taken away from you. Two, like you said, you're next after that because you never know what opportunity that person can help you with. Plug you in, yeah. Like, my friends, I'll tell you, like, I have such great friends. Like, you know, one, my best friend, Tamara, she was, you know, working in an industry that is so far out from what I was trying to do. And she'd be like, girl, there is a job on this website. Go put my name. You know, you go put your name in. Like, you have to surround yourself, too. I, I always tell people, I'd rather have four quarters than a million pennies. Um, You have to be careful of the tribe you attract, you have right. to be careful, too, of who you are sharing your good news with. You oh, have yeah. to be careful of who, you know, you have around you because you feed off that energy. And I think for me, particularly, I think one of the reasons, too, why I feel so blessed is because at the start of this year, I had to make a lot of hard decisions. I had to rid myself of people that meant the most to me. Like you said, you had people that showed you more love at, in this pandemic or during COVID then people, I had to rid myself I, I call them dead ends I had to rid myself, I cut my entire hair off and, and so I'm cutting those layers of mm -hmm. people that didn't serve me any purpose, people that was just in your life to find out, you know there's two type of people, the ones right. that are cozy they just want to know what's going on with you yeah. Yeah. but they're not really happy, they're not there for you and they, they come, come in like sheeps, come like oh yes, you know, they're for you but they're really not for you 
So you yeah. have to rid yourself of those two in order to grow. Because when you do that, you're lighter. You cut the dead ends off. You're you're floating. Like, you know, it's necessary for growth. Exactly. Pruning is necessary for growth. It's yeah. necessary for advancement. And just be careful of who you are aligning with and attracting. Like, it's, it's, it's just necessary for us to cleanse our energy and ask God to cleanse us from those type of people. Because sometimes, yeah. You know, God want to bless you, but he wants you to move from around certain people. Yes. And when you move, like, you'll be, you're going to, like, my auntie always used to tell me, like, girl, Jolian, when you do this or when you step out, you're going to ask yourself, is this the same Jolian? You're going to be surprised it's the same you. And it's like, ever since I've done that, it's like, my life has just been like, a straight trajectory. Like, God has just been showing up and showing out in every area of my life so it's it's just sometimes you know that moment when you're just down and you, you feel like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel that's when your breakthrough is about to come that's when god is up getting ready to you know you know there's this one song send the rain that is my favorite song it's like sometimes you're planting that seed you know all those seeds and you're doing all this stuff and you can't see the harvest but the harvest is connected to the rain. So, you know, that rain that is falling and you're like, why, why is everything going wrong? It's because God is getting ready. You know, he's, he's sending that blessing so that he, it's going to sprout up. You're going to see them flowers and all this stuff. So just always just don't give up. Like I can't. And that's one of the reasons why I do Jolie things. Don't give up because I've been there. I'm telling you this because I've been, I've been to the point where I felt like, I don't want to do this anymore. When I was sick, I was telling doctors, I was like, you know, um, what is that thing? Assisted. If you can't find it for me, yeah. if, you know what I mean? I'm ready mm -hmm. because I can't keep hmm. doing this. And so I look back now at my illness and I'm just like, that was God purging my system because doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And it was just like that stress, you know, of absorbing other people's energy and just be careful of, how much you put out like you can't be there for everybody right. you can't be there for every single person and you can't absorb everybody's energy and it's not selfish to put yourself first ever it's never selfish yeah. because if you can't pour from an empty glass no matter how you try or switch it or wish or pray about it you cannot in order for you to grow you have to put yourself first and get to that point where you're in the, at a point where you can pour out and bless and help others so it's just important that you know whatever it is whatever storm and i know this pandemic is hard a lot of people lost their job but maybe you know that you losing your job is a blessing in disguise because god is not preparing you getting you ready to reap a harvest you know something bigger and better something that was laid on your heart that you always wanted to do and you didn't feel like you could do it mm. so that's just me telling you like don't give up it gets better yes oh my goodness so many gems and one thing like you said about purging your environment i think sarah mentioned that is it takes a lot of introspection and also faith to do that because a lot of people don't want to be alone but sometimes being alone is actually a lot easier than having a bunch of people around you that are saying all these negative things and telling you you can't do what you're putting um, out in the world and it's it's crazy because like you said even telling people ideas or telling people your plans they will be the first people to be like oh you can't do that don't you need a little bit more experience and you just have to do it you don't even the thing is you don't even need anyone's approval to do what god put in your heart to do you just need to do it and you just need to find a way and god will put you in that situation somehow He'll, like, just, like, the recruiter that reached out to you. It just happens all of a sudden. And you just have to have faith that nothing that you're doing is in vain. None of the trials and tribulations you're going through are in vain. They're setting you up for that destination moment. So I love that. Mm -hmm. And just to touch on what you said about being alone, like, at the start of this, I was alone. Like, a part of me purging was, you know, learning how to be alone. And I had to stand 
in my truth and my authority by myself, I felt I, there was a point where it's not pleasant. I felt bitter. I felt angry. Um, and I was just upset at, you know, a certain point. But then it's like my, me being alone, my solitude is heavenly. Like I'm learning so much about myself that I didn't know that, you know, I could do where I'm capable of. So being alone is not a bad thing. There's nothing wrong in being alone. And like when, when the time is right, God will send you whoever it is that he wants you to be around. But sometimes it's just a test to see if you are willing and committed um, to the promises of God. And, you know, it's, and being alone allowed me to reconnect my faith with God. Like there's not a day that goes by. I haven't read my Bible, prayed, go to church, whatever. Because that time alone allowed me to, you know, be introspective of, you know, who I'm around and what kind of energy I'm giving off. So sometimes, especially in this society, we see all these relationships that sometimes, you know, it's not for the best. And we think, oh, I want to have that. I want to. But you can have that for yourself. You could court yourself. Love exactly. yourself how you want other people to love you buy those yes. stuff the luxury that you want to get or just spend that time journal and you know write down little stuff make new goals stuff like that like it's time that you're gonna wish that you took advantage of and i wish i'd, I'd done this a lot sooner but nothing before it's time so it's nothing really bad with being alone you learn to love it and appreciate it I totally agree with that. And I think that wisdom comes in solitude a lot of times mm -hmm. because you don't have all those voices and you're just, it's you and your God and you and yourself sometimes too, just looking in and finding out what you're thinking and, you know, how you're feeling. Because like sometimes you don't even think about that. You go through the whole day and it's like auto right. mode, all right. right, work, this, that, groceries, da, 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 then bed, wake up and you don't even like think about oh, wow, I'm breathing. I have all these things that God's blessed me with. So yeah. it's so important. Yeah. But wow, wow, wow. So any last advice that you have for people who want to get more developed in career, resume, or even like starting with therapy? Um. Okay, so first of all, go follow Jolie Thinks. I'm launching soon. I'm trying. I was. I wanted to launch on my birthday, but I'm gonna actually put something out like this weekend. Hopefully, I'm also in the middle of a move, so I'm just like uh, all over the place. But no, I'm late on my assignments, so I have to get that done. That's what I'll be doing for my birthday, my homeworks. But um, go follow Jolie Things. I have a lot of stuff in store for you guys and i'm very affordable very very affordable like i feel like if you're looking for a job how can you afford to be paying hundreds of dollars for somebody exactly. to me like makes no sense but anyway um i think if you want to get in um in 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 i don't know invested in men um therapy um you could also reach out to me i'll help you find therapists i recommend them um a lot of therapists are doing virtual visits right now so you don't have to go in person and they're also waiving the copay so if you have insurance you don't have to pay a copay isn't that good like you know what awesome. i mean covid comes with a little yeah but anyway so yeah. <laughs> do um therapy is food for your soul guys if you are taking care of your physical health. You can't take care of your physical body without taking care of your mental health. Like, right. I think it's absolutely, imp it's one of the most important things you could ever do for yourself. It's, I'm not going to tell you, it's like sitting down and lighting candles and just doing yoga. It's not, it's really not. <laughs> it's the hard work. Yeah, yeah, you have to work on yourself. You have to be introspective. And but it also makes you a better person. I've been doing it for five years. I could tell you, people could tell you, the girl that was in college and even high school is not this girl right now. Okay. So I'm telling you, it works. Um, it's it's food, it's been food for my soul. It has helped me. Um, and sometimes even going through a therapy. You know, makes you distance yourself. I, I had to drop friends and family and all kind of people that you know I thought I would never be able to do without. But look, look at me. I'm still alive and I'm doing well without them. So yes. I think it's important that you take care of yourself. I cannot emphasize enough. You cannot pour from an empty glass. 
um um you have to just you know make sure that you are good for you and before you can be anything else for anybody else if you're looking forward to get you know involved in epidemiology you want to be epi it doesn't matter you could be an rn i have met like one of my one of my well not my supervisor but one of my team uh, co-workers she's a nurse and she's working as an epidemiologist so you don't need to be in a, a particular path there is no straight and, and narrow line um to to be to be an epidemiologist don't let anybody put any limitations on your life you could do anything that you set out to do whatever is in your heart if god calls you to, to it he'll he'll bring you through it it doesn't yes. matter what anybody else said forget about your naysayers your parents believe in yourself first and foremost um my life has not always been easy it is still not easy it's a work in progress but i have faith and i trust god and that he has really helped and come through for me if you're on here and you don't have a relationship with god or you don't believe in god try him for yourself there was a time even though i grew up in a christian household i used to believe that if god is so you know good why are all these bad stuff happening but let me tell you like he works it all for your good he brings all things everything that was meant to harm you he works it out for your good you have to try him and prove him for yourself it doesn't matter what your pastors say have your own personal relationship with him that's how i've come to love him and you know trust and develop on him so develop um um depend on him so don't worry about what anybody else says do your own homework for yourself work on yourself for you and nobody else and believe in yourself always you can do it it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks okay oh yes yes <laughs> everyone give a round of applause oh. man we we have grown so much yeah we have grown so much and i'm so happy that we stayed in touch all this time Me and we've been pouring into each other all these years yeah. and you know no one's perfect we've all had our ups and downs but the important thing like you said is being able to have that introspection and know when you have too much on your plate because like you said an empty cup can't supply others so you come first that's mm -hmm. not selfish mm -hmm. that's self-care so Here. write that down period <laughs> write that down <laughs> write it on your mirror read it every day <laughs> so i think this has been a very very enriching conversation for everyone make sure you guys follow jolie on truly jolie underscore and at jolie.thinks and she's got some amazing things on the way she's going to be launching. So make sure you follow her so that you can be up to date with her latest products and everything she's going to be offering service wise for careers. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much sis, for joining. And, oh my gosh. And I was so nervous, but it was good. <laughs> no, girl, this felt like a just regular sister, sister conversation, honestly honestly so and i will be posting the live on my youtube channel later as well as it will be on my igtv for anyone who came in late and wants to watch from the beginning mm -hmm. but it's been such a pleasure talking to you thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit with us because i know you are doing it all right now and I, you are killing it like 10 minutes before i'm like rushing so it's my late evening at work so i was like oh my gosh i hope i make it but yeah <laughs> yeah no you did your thing honestly wow i'm surprised i didn't get the countdown thing because usually after an hour it gives me a countdown like your time was almost up and it didn't give me that does it mean that we've made it to a new level i don't know you have, it's, you have. Maybe. yeah maybe. You have. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um and i i think like you said anybody who wants to find out how to start looking for a therapist especially now that they're doing online sessions also be free to reach out to Jolie because I think that's so important mental health is wealth right now you have to deal with these things we all have elements of depression anxiety all of that but if you talk to somebody about that I think it's so important and it's so vital to our overall well-being so okay. make sure you guys don't look at it as a taboo topic it's something that really I think everybody should do so yeah yes it's not taboo guys we need it can't separate the two as tamara said we need yeah. physical and mental health that's the only way we gonna overcome like gotta take care of this period 
do. <laughs> and one last thing I was going to say is I really like your idea of journaling because sometimes, I don't know if anyone has encountered this, but mm -hmm. you might actually feel nervous to write some things down that you're thinking mm -hmm. because it makes it real. And when your thoughts and your emotions are real, then you have to deal with it. And it's not just up in this nebulous cloud in your head subconsciously weighing you down it's like on paper and you're like okay what am i going to do about this now it's 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 been a bittersweet like i remember one time i was like crying and i wrote something down and then i i went back i was like scrolling through my journal and then i saw that what i wrote down I actually wrote in a prior and actually came to fruition so sometimes too they say when you write it down it's real and it just it's like you almost manifested, I don't know, instantly. So mm -hmm. it's good also just to see where, you know, oh, I was having a bad day in this day. Today was a good day. I haven't journaled in a while. I need to. But today is a good day. Um, today, Yesterday was a bad day. So it's just good to see, you know, where you're coming from and see your progress. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. It's funny because sometimes I'll look at what I wrote in January versus December. And I'm like, wow, I used to think like that like in just one year or so yeah <laughs> it's a constant work of progress <laughs> yeah so i rec i highly recommend it i normally do it every day but i haven't done it in a week just been so busy but yeah oh sarah lynn said a therapist told me about writing letters to people but don't actually send them i've done that before i have and i said everything i wanted to tell them yeah <laughs> sometimes good sometimes bad <laughs> I've never but done that. I should do that when I'm angry or something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just better than... Because I've been there where, you know, you send that angry email, but why not just have it in your journal? No right. one ever has to see it. <laughs> you get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, Julie, I know that you have a lot to do and you have a lot of lives and amazing things to save because you are just superwoman right now. So keep up everything you're doing. Keep inspiring us. Thank, Thank you for all the gems. Thank you. You know, you made me actually, um, I'm thinking of using Superwoman as like, I'm going to see how I'm going to use it with all these copyright. But um, oh, yeah. that Alicia, he's like, I was like, oh, I never thought about it. And I wanted a good intro for my thing. I like that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, no, that's exactly the song that came to mind for me. Like when I, when I thought about, I always try to choose a song that fits someone's personality for that promo. I was like, that's that's Jolie's song. I okay. think if you find a remix, mm -hmm. you might be able to get away with the copyright. Oh, I might have to find one. Find mm -hmm. a remix or like a techno version of it or something. Yeah. The struggle's real. <laughs> <laughs> this <Yeah>. copyright. <laughs> oh, girl, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And you're doing yes. great stuff too. And you know I'm always going to be here to support you. Oh, thank you so much. And we're going to link up one day in the clinic, hospital, Oh, we're cool. here. Yeah. We're here. So, <laughs> yes. And um, your birthday, you said it's tomorrow? It's Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, we're turning up virtually. Okay, we are. I'll be in touch. <laughs> yes. All right, Jolie. Bye. So, everyone, thank you for joining in. Thank you, Jolie, for coming through as well. And I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of the week. And if you want to be on Testimony Tuesdays, reach out to me. Uh, starting in January, more dates, because the rest of the year is pretty much booked so yes that's god that's all god okay. <laughs> <Booked and busy. laughs> thank you all right all Good right night. bye bye everyone